All right, y'all, ain't no half-stepping with Marcus J is back. We in the building. First time in a couple of weeks, and it's my birthday tomorrow, y'all. So y'all got to call us up and show some love to me. I got a whole crew checking in, ready for us, and we are ready to rock and roll. Ain't no half-stepping with Marcus J is right now. Open your ears, strap on your thinking cap, socially conscious talk that's entertaining with a dash of humor and the top sports stories of the week. It's time for Ain't No Half Steppin' with Marcus J. Sellers has Jordan, Jordan with two seconds to go, puts it up, it's good at the buzzer, Michael Jordan has won it for Chicago. Manning lobs it, Burris alone! If they lion, then they have Steppy. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J is back in the building, y'all. First time in a couple of weeks. We've been doing some replays, but we here, y'all, and we got live shows going for it for the foreseeable future. Ain't no half stepping live from the Dana Legacy Internet Radio. We are in fact the flag. Ship Show Lexi and that radio. Thank y'all, everybody, for listening to us. That was your main man, Jay Grizzy, who I'll introduce here momentarily. We appreciate everybody that's listening to us, the folks that are listening to us on Mix Law, on TuneIn, Legacy, Internet Radio, and all of our affiliates. We appreciate the love that we get. We got a lot to get into tonight, and I will not take any more time to get the crew in and introduce everybody joining us in her monthly spot every single month usually on the fourth monday but last week was a holiday so we gave everybody the night off but tonight we got the dating pool diva in the building with us what's going on sis a lot busy 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 i am wow that's a very wonderful and joyful way to jump in there yeah. and say hello to the world how you hey, doing hey world is that better is that a little <laughs> bit better we're gonna, we gonna, we gonna get some some smiles and some joyfulness we, we can the people tell this is me my outlet for when today. people tell me that i'm grumpy and that when the lights go on then i kind of perk up so we're gonna need you to do the same thing we can do that Yes, I can. You ready to rock and roll? I'm ready to rock and roll. All right, you heard him on the intro. My brother, my partner, and my friend Jay Grizzy Green is hey, in the building. Hey, hey, what's good, y'all? What's up, brother? Not much, man. I'm happy to be here to celebrate the birthday. I've been celebrating your birthday since where? Well, Saturday? Since Saturday. <laughs> we say Saturday. 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 So, yeah, I've been turned up since Saturday celebrating. So, I um, appreciate you having me here again at Ain't No Half Stepping, man. It's going to. I got a lot of opinions today. I saw the lineup. If y'all ain't see what we're going to talk about, he going to tell y'all because it's going to – we're going to turn I know, up. I normally go ahead and tease it, but you notice this time I didn't. I, I just want to shock the shock listener. Y'all. I want to shock, shock style. of course. And then, you know, last but certainly not least, joining us in the den of Legacy Internet Radio on Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J, the flagship show. We got the first lady of Legacy Internet Radio joining us. We got comedian that's Lisa P in the room. Oh, no. What's up, What's baby? What's up? Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Family. How you doing? Fantabulous. Like Grizzly stated, we've been turned up since saturday for your birthday we're gonna make sure you bring this thing in right brother that's like, right like your naked ass on a slippy slack <laughs> we got you we're gonna make sure you come in smooth ass. I, 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 I like being naked too I, I enjoy being yeah naked, but we so. got you but happy birthday we're gonna help you kick it off right which that's, it is tomorrow right that's right tomorrow, tomorrow. i'll be i'll be i'll be 40 years old tomorrow i'm feeling oh, pretty yeah, yeah, oh, yeah i'm feeling good about that 
I'm feeling good about that. And of course, uh, we would be remiss if we did not open up our show tonight without acknowledging the passing of a couple of legends, one in the entertainment world and the other in the world of civil rights. We'll come to Maya Angelou in a second, but I don't think anybody can say that the Brady Bunch wasn't a part of their youth. And, Marsha, and so, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> everybody see that's your line. So we, 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 I don't know if anybody does, you know, memorize shows like I do, but I was going to have a little fun and just kind of pay homage uh, to, to, to everybody's favorite maid, uh, Alice Ambie Davis from the Brady Bunch passing away over the weekend. So you got Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Wait a minute, except Florence. You know, Florence was the favorite. favorite yeah. yeah, yeah. Florence yeah, was the favorite. Alice was the first, but Florence yeah. was the favorite. Yeah. Florence, but yeah. So what's your favorite quote, Jez? Grizz, you Grizz, you're gonna go with Marsha. I go with Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. But I have my favorite episode. What's your favorite episode? When they went, they went on a family vacation joint, and it was like a mystery. Like it was like a Scuba Doo mixed with Brady to Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I wanted all three of them white girls, though. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the only catchy phrase or saying that they had out Brady Bunch was Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. 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 Ooh, she punched her in the eye. Thing, she got face. Yeah, she got hit in the face with a football. With a football. Yeah. Or was it in the nose? It was a little dose, right? right. She got hit the right. I think one of my favorite episodes is when Jan needed glasses and she ran into the family portrait after they had a gun <laughs> bike. Yeah, I think that was one of my favorites because she just knew she could see, but she couldn't. Oh, so, yeah. that's awesome. That's yeah. hint to the 40 olds. Make sure you get your ass checked. By who? Uh, the yeah, doctor of optometry. <laughs> Dr. Euphemia Huggins Williams. Yeah, ODPC. Yes, sir. Daddy Poo Diva, you got a Brady Bunch memory? Oh, you well, the theme. And yeah. that's my favorite well, the folks part. are hearing it right now. We're playing it, you know, on a, on a little bit of loop. Um, probably my favorite. Um, uh, well, actually, I don't really have a favorite episode. Well, actually, I do. My favorite episode was when Bobby got obsessed with westerns and, and Jesse James and whatnot. And he had the dream that he was uh, hanging out with Jesse James until Jesse James robbed the family and shot up shot everybody. Up everybody. <laughs> and he got all freaked out and whatnot. So. That was our uh, that was our little tribute to the Brady Bunch. I know that that was a little weird for us, but I like to have a little bit of fun. And I, I know so. that uh, every single uh, day I come home from school and watch it, Grizz. What you got, man? Being that, you know, uh, what was the maid name again? Uh, you talking about the Brady Bunch, the father? No, the maid. Oh, the maid, Alice. Yeah, Alice, Alice that passed away. Rest in peace, Alice. She was the first white lady on <laughs> national TV to quote unquote live and sin because she had that boyfriend who was the the, uh, the butcher the butcher <laughs> sam sam the yeah, butcher sam the butcher but her, her and sam never like see it like it was like implicated it in was the some, tv it was show sexual tension yeah going yeah, on. yeah. And yeah. sam wanted to give her the meat but yeah she was racking that meat but yeah shout out to alice man because i always if, if i wanted to live in a, in a little Lily Suburbs, I would you, want my. You would want to be a maid at the Brady Bunch. No, I would want my maid to be like her, man. I want my what maid. Would your, she, what would your butler name be if you were at the Brady Bunch? Steven. <laughs> yeah, it can't, you can't go wrong with Steven, y'all. Okay, so go ahead, Mark. <laughs> or Jeffrey from uh, Will Fred here, Friends. <laughs> I, I would have a butler. My butler's name would be Piedmont. <laughs> I don't know why. I always wanted a butler named Piedmont. Yeah, that sounds like body. an old gentry. Yeah. I don't, hey, look, man. Don't <laughs> even. Sound like somebody who don't mind whip you up some grits and eggs. Yeah. Right. Like, and I would always say his name all like funny, like, "Hey, yo, Piedmont." Right, like, right, you would right. never yo, say P. it how you would think the name. Right. You, th you think it sounds stuffy, but I say it real hood, like, "Yo, Piedmont, yo, pour me some more crown." You know, Did she ever? Like that. Was she ever in uh, Alice and B. Davis? Was she ever in any other? I I, I looked up her biography, mm -hmm. and she she gave up acting after the Brady Bunch went off the air in 1974, and she had done a few guest spots. She actually was in the Brady Bunch movie, Ooh, yeah. the remakes in the 90s. She actually played a cab driver, uh, so <laughs> she didn't play Alice, but she played a cab driver. So she really didn't do much she actually uh had a normal career wow. before her brother turned her on to acting when she was in her 30s wow. and she was in her 40s when she was playing alice so i did i and did she look never changed her outfit neither she rocked the same that's all I dry cleaning was great back in the and 70s. that's and you know who else reminds me of that um and i don't want to get on this for too long but uh mrs garrett reminded me the same oh, thing yeah. because that's i always right. see mrs garrett look the same way every time i ever saw her after the show well, y'all should never have nothing to say when y'all see me with the same clothes on <laughs> 
damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all can rep Alice, but I can't yeah. wear the same stuff. Oh, it's mm-hmm. this yeah, that's, that's television, huh? You know, that's Alice, you know who else rocked it? Gilligan's Island. Thanks, they always rock the same clothes exactly. all the time. I've never seen Gilligan in anything other than that red shirt. Right. Special shout out to my sister, Joy. Up, Joy, Joy saying that she missed us while we've been off the air. And she's saying happy birthday to yours truly. So thank you, Joy. We appreciate you listening. Thank you for the happy birthday wishes. Of course, we lost last week a giant in the world of literary arts, in the world of civil rights, in the world of American black culture, in the world uh, in, in, the, in the world of American culture, uh, Dayton Pool Diva, as the author in the room, I'd like your thoughts on the passing of Dr. Maya Angelou. It's definitely um, a deep impact on anybody. Um, you don't have to be an author. I mean, just anybody who believes in civil rights, who believes in, you know, um, standing up for people's freedoms. Um, her poetry was really deep. You know, anything the um, Cage Bird sings and... Um, Phenomenal Woman. The pho- Phenomenal Woman is like That's one me. of my favorites. Um, I put it in my book, Love Thyself, as a matter of fact, because I felt like it was so inspirational for young women. Um, so, yeah, definitely it's, it's an impact. Lisa P., any thoughts on the passing of Maya Angelou? Um, uh, yes, of course. I was very sad to hear about her passing, but just knowing her legacy will always, always live on. That's why I'm so happy to be a part of Legacy Internet Radio because as her, our legacy will live on as well. But she was a great poet, a great author, you know, a great activist. She she did a lot for people, you know, for her um, not doing a lot of schooling, but was able to go to Africa and start a media outlet there. I thought that was very inspirational. And like um, Arthur Christmas stated, one of her uh, best pieces for me, to me, was Phenomenal Woman. And um, like I said, that speaks values to a lot of women, for any women or children who have not read it, especially young children, young women, girls, um, someone should read it to them. So. Um, I say we lost a great one, but because she was so great, we will never forget her. So yeah, rest yeah. in peace to Miss Maya. Definitely agree. Grizz, what you got, man? I wasn't much into the poetry, but I did know Maya Angelou. Mm-hmm. You know, I just knowing her from her, uh, was she on uh, Bruce's Place? Apparently you didn't know too much about her. Yeah, she I was can't on, remember she was on Bruce's Place. She was sitting place. on the porch talking to Oprah or she, somebody. Was she on Bruce's Place? I know she was in I Roots. I think so. I yeah, think yeah, she's yeah. right. You know, that, so I remember that. Uh, I remember her from the little guest spot she used to do, being an elderly, quote unquote, almost like Cicely Tyson, you know, figure on TV, on, on screen, and in movies. But then the phenomenal women, like, I, there was a time where you couldn't kn- know a sister who didn't have some up on social media talk about I'm a phenomenal woman and I was like okay all right I know who Maya Angelou is or is it Angelou 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 yeah yeah Angel- I heard it different Angelou. ways yeah, yeah. I, you know Angelou rest in peace Angelou. I saw this they they said when they called on 911 she said don't resuscitate yeah. let me go and I tip my cap to her because I say the same thing so yeah. rest in peace uh, now, I wanted to, of course, every time I bring up something, I always have to throw in the monkey wrench. Uh, Grizz, I'll have you jump in here first. Uh, Westboro Baptist Church. What they going to do? They talking about boycotting May her funeral. They They're talking about boycotting her funeral. But uh, there is a biker group. Uh, I cannot remember the name, and I'm looking for it. I'm having some trouble finding it. But there's a biker group who does a lot of blocking of protests, not just Westboro Baptist Church, but protests in general. But protests in general, um, they've done a lot of blocking. They blocked a lot of the negative uh, 9-11 protests, and they blocked uh, some of the Islamic protests that went on last year. And they're planning on blocking the Westboro Baptist Church, who intent on boycotting this funeral here they are making it plain that they don't necessarily agree with her politics but they agree with her first amendment right to be who she is and to say what she wanted to say so what i wanted to kind of get you guys' thoughts on first on the westboro baptist church and those jackasses who like to uh block you know boycott everybody's funeral and then two a group who has come out and said they don't agree with dr angelou but they're gonna still hold her down I mean, for, I don't even know what, like, the. I think Westboro Baptist Church will politic uh, or protest against anybody. Like, I think they'll protest against Jesus. If he came back and did a second resurrection, they'll be right there at his at, at the funeral or when he 
fly off and give up the ghost type of situation. Like, I don't understand why they so hateful. But then, on the other respect, it, this biker group, like, is it like the Hells Angels or something? I'm, I'm pulling them up. Yeah, pull I'm, them up. I'm, I'm pulling I them want up. Them to kick I'm pulling them up right they now. Ass. They're actually <laughs> called 2 Million Bikers to D.C., uh, is what they're she called. From DC? That's what they're called because they ini- they initially did a block of a protest march in DC, in DC before, and it wasn't something that was organized or sanctioned. It was just a bunch of the homies that got together and they went and they and they ended up blocking, and then it ended up growing. The person that organized that ended up growing, and now they're actually an organization called Two Million Bikers to DC. And so they, and they will show up. They are quote, uh, mm-hmm. they're quote building a wall for Maya Angelou in order to thwart West Barrow Baptist Church from disrupting the funeral of the iconic and controversial American poet on Thursday night in Winston Salem. Her funeral, as we know, is later on this week. She's so from the, North Kakalaki. She, she, she. The funeral is set to be on the campus of Wake Forest. I'm, I, I, maybe she is from. I think she's from DC. You might want to wiki that. I can, I can, I can, I can, I can. I can yeah, that's DC. the whole. Uh, greatness of uh, <laughs> well, I'll set it up the for internet you. right now. Or if anybody wants to tell us, y'all can call us. The live line is open. 804-402-2893. Thank you for giving that out because we didn't. She's actually born in St. Louis wow. uh, and passed away in Winston-Salem. So, okay, so, so that's, that's where she, she laid her head. That's, yeah, that's where she laid her head. Um, so she, basically, you know, my thoughts on Maya Angelou, I mean, this was a woman who she touched so many generations. You know what I mean? Like, I saw a photograph of her in Africa where she lived in Egypt for years. Many, mm-hmm. many years. People didn't know she lived in Egypt for many years. But she was good friends with Malcolm X and good friends with Dr. Betty Shabazz and, and that whole crew. And there's a photograph of her in Africa building with Malcolm X. And we also know that she was great fa- friends with Nelson Mandela, even wrote a poem uh, that was to be read at his funeral in December of last year when he passed away. Uh, she'd been asked by many American presidents to write poems for various things uh, that have come up in history. So when you think of a giant in our history like Dr. Maya Angelou, whether you agree with her politics or not, I think that we would be remiss if we didn't acknowledge the level of uh, spirituality that she had as well as influence that she had on many people, black, white, uh, particularly the women, because a lot of the poems that she wrote were based in women empowerment and they you know, were colorless, you know, the, you know, phenomenal women, you know, while I, do, I can't quote it, you know, by verbatim, verse right. verbatim, but I, I, I know from when I have read that poem that it wasn't something that was specific to the sisters. It could have been anybody that could have gotten some wisdom from that poem. So I just want to take a moment and pay, and pay homage uh, to Dr. Maya Angelou, who we lost last week on Wednesday. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. 804-402-2893 is the number to dial to get in on the discussion. Y'all ready for some controversy? Yeah, let me just say something real quick, Marcus. Mar- Mar- <laughs> I can't even remember what it is. No, and, and it was uh, also funny that you stated that she played in Roots because this might sound really crazy for me, but I have never seen all of Roots, the whole thing, but I did this particular time Black History Month, thank you to BET for showing that, (laughs) Um, Roots. She was Kunta Kinte's grandmother. And I think then that's the part that I actually learned when she told him to go out and make a drum for his brother. Mm. And that's actually when he got captured. And I was like, oh, so it was Maya Angelou's fault. (laughs) She couldn't give no no poem to to dodge those people. But yeah, um, that was because, like I said, not actually seeing all the roots. You can say what you want to know. I don't watch that because it actually upsets me. So that's why I've never seen it in full. Um, But yeah, she was responsible. So that's what folk get for signifying. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, she. Um, I think Cicely, oh, yo, Cicely Tyson played show. his mother. It's like five, she was like five years older than Cicely Tyson. She right. played her moms and whatnot. So I always did get a kick out of mm. that. But yeah, I mean, Maya Angelou is a, is a, is a giant, and she's definitely gonna be missed. They know how stable Marcus J eight zero four four zero two two eight nine three is the number to dial to be down with the discussion going forward. Um, like I said, you guys, you guys ready for some controversy? Yeah. yeah. All right. So the next couple of yeah. stories we're gonna get into is definitely. Do you have forty built. stories? Forty stories. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I don't have food. Okay. I don't, I don't you know, we're going to be here about that long. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah we're going to run to about 10. Did she mm. just call me long winded grace? Yes. Yeah, she did. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's I a talk show, it. though. We're supposed to talk. Yeah, um, Bo, Bo Bergdahl. Mm. Do you know the name Bo, Bo Bergdahl? I, I saw him. Okay. I All saw right. him on TV. Here's the like thing I, I didn't bring this up because I care specifically about him. I wanted to bring this up because I wanted to talk more about the situation. Bo Bergdahl was the uh, Army sergeant who was released recently uh, as a prisoner of war by the Afghanistan, uh, the Afghanistan uh, I, I guess it was Taliban that actually had him. And his release has come up in controversy over the last few days because this wasn't someone who was captured. This was someone, Grizz, who was, he walked off his post. He basically went AWOL. Right. And he went AWOL. I'll and, read that. And he, went, he went AWOL and got captured by the enemy and spent the last five years in captivity. And the reason why it's coming up as a, controversy, a controversial occurrence is you've got some that says this dude ain't no hero like why are we celebrating a dude that went a wall he quit on, po- on guard yeah right? he went on guard he he, he 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 ran away from home basically you know and, and and got picked up and not only did he uh risk american lives uh during the time where they were initially looking for him but american lives were risked in the uh i guess when they got him back and then the the, the main thing that i wanted to bring up was the fact that the American government gave up five uh, Afghan Guantanamo cats. cats from in Guantanamo that had been captured. Now, those people are still in custody. They were sent overseas. Uh, I think they're in Qatar or wherever they went over there in the Middle East. They're still in custody. However, they were released from Guantanamo. So you got a lot of opponents to the president who have issue with him because they're saying that we just negotiated with terrorists. So here's the deal, Grizz. Um, I want your thoughts. I'm going to go around the room and get the ladies in on this one. I, I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I'm somewhat on the fence on this one. And, I, I, you know, I, I'll lay out what my my total thoughts are after you guys. I mean, it. if I was in his unit or was one of the guys that had to go out to look for him after he done walked off, yeah, I'm going to be pissed. Like, I don't know what. But, I mean, the, 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 I'm not in the military, so I hear that they say, you know, no man gets left behind no matter whether he walked off. Or whatever, right? But I'm a civilian, and y'all might have heard that. Yeah, let's be say leave his ass. I mean, and then five, five, quote unquote terror. I'm sure they terrorists. I'm sure they did something. You don't go to Guantanamo. For yeah, you don't just. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, for crocheting, right? So I'm sure that these five combatants, uh, enemy combatants, that they got in Guantanamo, Cuba, uh, five for one. Come on, man. No, that's that's a little bit much, and I I don't I don't want five Punjabis, and I can say that. No, you really can't, can't say that. No, we're not going to okay, do that. Okay, I can't say that. Do okay, that. y'all can see me at your local spot <laughs> saying that. Then. But uh, you know, I don't want them uh, walking around the streets or wherever plotting to kill more Americans, all because of one numbnut decided to you know do some Hogan heroes and walk off. And, and, you know, get caught, you know. So that's my the way I come down. I'm glad that he's back, you know, but the, the, the military should kind of temper uh, the AWOL policy and, and, and not celebrate. I mean, I know the military, I mean, uh, the media going to celebrate it, but something should happen to the dude, you know, cut his pay for his pension or something. Honorable, uh, dishonorable. Yeah, dishonorable. Some type, something like that. You can't walk off. Let's see what you got. All right. So the lifeguard left the pool. <laughs> now what happened? What would happen to any other lifeguard that left the pool and left the kids just lay in the floor? Everybody, everybody. He well. would have to get, like you stated, dealt with, fired, or dishonorably discharged. And again, I I heard also as far as that, I guess the government was upset because they felt like that we did negotiations with everybody else. But I feel like that because they know that our American soldier did a effed up thing first of all by walking off then i felt like that's the most that they can do okay let's try to fix our mistake i.e his mistake can you please let him go even though it's been five years but i felt like it had to do to save american or whatever he said nobody left behind um so i felt like a negotiation did have to be made in order to let him go so 
Um, I'm pretty sure everybody, this will be well thought out. Everybody will get the discipline that they need and that's going to come upon them. But, I mean, I felt like if it, if it saved him, whatever they did, I don't know what negotiations they actually put up to have them released. But I say you got to do what you got to do to bring our soldiers home. So, David, what you got? I definitely agree with you guys. I mean, they, they couldn't just leave him over there. So they did the right thing. And, you know, he does need to get some kind of disciplinary action because he not only endangered himself, but his platoon as well. You know, so I definitely agree with you. This is going to sound cold-blooded, but if and what it appears happened, we did. it looks like we did negotiate. If we negotiated with terrorists, I'm not happy about that because you do not want to set the precedent that we are willing to start talking over anybody, even if it's a soldier who was not taken while he was AWOL. I mean, if it's an honest soldier who's honestly working the job and doing the right thing, protecting and serving and doing everything that they're supposed to do the right way, and he gets captured and we negotiated with terrorists to get him back, I got a problem with that. And I definitely got a problem with them negotiating to get back somebody who quit. But doesn't it look bad, too, for us to, you know, pretty much diss our own people? You know, it, it looks like we just left them behind. We're not united. We're not a united front. I, I don't know. Anyway, because I was getting ready to say, Marcus, what if that was you, you know, and you were a soldier and you just, you know, disowned your post where you were supposed to be? regardless of you're still one of ours, like you tell us all the time. You're still one of ours, regardless of how messed up you did, you were right. or what situation. So we still going to come and get you. We still going to bail you out. Right. I understand the negotiations as far as what we do, as far as the government and things like that. But, again, I agree with Charisma. We just can't. We're just not going to leave you over there. Now, of course, this may sound like for them, word, we can grab any of their soldiers and we're going to get what we want just to give them back, you know. But I feel like it may have been a little bit more in depth than what we know. Right. Of course, the government's not going to let us know everything. everything yeah. But for them putting that little inkling that we negotiated, negotiation was the biggest word out there. So, of course, negotiating tariffs, yeah, of course, that doesn't mix with us. But being that they didn't lay out all of everything but the negotiation was entailed of, then, of course, it leaves us with we're unhappy about what they did. But we got to come and get you regardless of what you did because you are ours. Yeah, I got you. I mean, and what you, you guys' position is fair. Um, I'm unmoved by him, but it's fair. I mean, you cannot negotiate with terrorists. You just can't. And if that is how they got this man back, then I got a problem with it. Now, if you're going to go in there and you're going to get him without negotiating, then I'm all for that. Like they got Jessica Lynch. Ain't nobody negotiated to go get her. They went and got her. You know what I mean? And there's other precedent for other people who they went and got. And I have no problem with that because I agree that you got to hold down your own. But what you cannot do is negotiate with terrorists. You just but, can't. But you, you, can't that, you can't do that. But Marcus, doesn't that tell you that something else deeper went down? I do than agree. just a negotiation? Yeah. You know, just like you said, yep. with Bin Laden, we went in and got them. Just like the rest of the people that you spoke of. You know, we went in and got them. But it has to be something else deeper. It's a twist that we don't know about that that, that went down, that occurred. It, all, it, it always is. And that's the, and that's the scary part. You know, I guess the part that I'm stuck on is them five faces that they flashing on the screen. That they let go. Uh, that the people who they, they let go. And I'll preface my aggressive stance on this by saying that those people weren't released. You know, they were just moved uh -huh. from Guantanamo to Qatar. I believe it's Qatar. And if anybody knows, if I got those facts wrong, please call me and let me know. 80440-2893. Let us know in social media. But um, I, I just, as cold-blooded as it sounds, I cannot agree with negotiating with terrorists, especially when you're giving up five criminals for one soldier. It just, to me, that just is not a precedent that I want to set. It okay, so let me, ask you, let me ask you a disheartening question. So would you had rather them kill the soldier? You talking about the, the enemy? No, our soldier who went AWOL. Would you just say, keep him? Well, I mean, if there, if there is a way that you can get him, military wise then so be it but what i won't do is well i'll give you this guy for that guy that's that's just not something that i as a you know if i if i am going to be the general here that's not something that i'm willing to do okay but okay so let me ask you and i know this is totally going off of your topics and i apologize no it's cool i mean this is discussion i'm okay with it how do you I'm feel okay about it. the nigerian girls 
who they have captive and they said, okay, we'll release them if you release our prisoners. But Do you feel like that's a good negotiation? A good or it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, very good point and it, it, it makes it, it makes me children. It, it causes me to pause because not only are we talk about children, we also talk about little girls. Mm -hmm. But we're again, I'm gonna come off as the cold guy here. Th that's not our country. True. And it's not necessarily our problem. Now True. we if we're if we're going to be the uh, police police of the of the world, then we need to be consistent. And there is many instances, even this one, where we have not been consistent. Duffer. And they, it, Duffer is the first, and that's what I was right thinking right. when I said that. You know, all the genocide and all the craziness that was going on there, nobody said nothing. You know why? Because millions and millions of black people getting killed by millions and millions of black people doesn't matter to the United States government. And, in, and, and those missing black girls don't matter to the United States government. The only reason why we in the middle of that is because the pressure that was put on the black president. That's, mm -hmm. that's what that was about, in my opinion. And so, you know, while I understand where you're going with that, you know, I do pause a little bit and I think about it, but I'm not sure that I'm willing to give up, you know, assets to bring people home. Because, again, that's negotiating with terrorists. It's not our government and it's not our problem. I mean, one of the things is that could come and bite the administration in the butt is, is one, of the, one of those cats, those five cats, all of a sudden started plotting let's say that they're in qatar right and eventually they're gonna let them go you know they're gonna they're gonna have to let them go or at least keep keep tabs on them if one of them cats get loose and get to yemen or get to a a, a, a country that likes to harbor terrorists or whatever and get to plotting and the next thing you know boom something happens here down this egg on the face of us americans and administration because of that so that's that's what i'm saying snap snap hey what it do? Ain't no half step. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. Uh, we're going to transition to our last story uh, here in this particular segment. But before we do that, I want to introduce the co-host of Ain't No Half Step with Marcus J, who just walked in the building, uh, who I haven't seen in a couple of weeks, and it's good to see her. I'll give her a hug in a minute. But I got my sister S Y Butler. Hello. What's up, girl? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am doing very good. It's good to see you. I'm I miss y'all. Yeah, miss, miss you, you too. You rocking the Steeler colors yeah, today. That's what it is. Well, I'm going to tell y'all, this look is compliments of Marcus. <laughs> oh, he put you on the spot. Because he was like... Get your ass down here. Get your ass... Yes. <laughs> yeah. Get in here. Right. So, this is what you get. That's what I said that. When right. you rushed me. Y'all can't see me, but I got my curlers in and my hair scarves. Mm. You got on the traditional joints, too. I ain't one to gossip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like the meat one. Uh, what uh, well, since, you, since you're here, we're going gonna to throw you right in the fire. The first, the last story oh, that we're going to do. Jesus Christ. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, the last story we're going to get into in this segment is a story that is very close to my heart that has me pretty damn fired up, and that is the Arsenio Hall show being canceled over the weekend. Um, this show had been on for a year, um, and the show was canceled. Now, Anybody that knows me knows that with me, the highlight or the headline of the story is never the whole story. At least not for me, it's not. And so while I see the looks on your faces, I don't care you got canceled. Um, that's <laughs> fine. You don't have to care if you don't care. But um, in a minute, you'll understand why I care. So okay. what's your thoughts on it? I don't care. Okay. All right. She said it. All right. I really, I've, I've never watched Arsenio. Even okay. in the 90s? Um, even in the 90s. I've never watched this show. I watched this show once, and I watched it for maybe 10 minutes, and that was because Prince was on it, and that was just recently. Uh, Diva? I love Arsenio Hall. Now, lately, I haven't been watching it as much, but to hear he was coming back made uh. me so excited. Like, I remember the 90s, and seeing him brought back that nostalgia from the 90s. Mm -hmm. And he, st he hasn't changed a bit. His personality is exactly the same. He still looks you the same. You know, he always has great guests and everything. And I heard that the reason they canceled it, because he didn't have A-list you know, type guest or whatever. Yeah, B -cele B -list celebrities. I've seen some cats on there. I've seen... Uh, yeah, I've seen, uh, let's see, Tyrese was on there. He had Suge on there, Suge Knight. <laughs> he had uh, Taraji. I mean, he had, it was like he was the jet in ebony of media in regards on the talk show circuit. I mean, 
I, it was sad for me to see him leave. I, I did support the show. I watched it. I wouldn't say religiously, but I watched it enough to to put my little dent in the ratings for him. And I, I, I uh, commented on Marcus Marcus's uh, take on it on uh, social media, right here. All right, yeah, I, I did, and I said, you know, I think he he did the wrong move by going to the CW because they have a limited access to a you know a, a wider net they could pull to have a listening audience. And the CW is is like the the B rated network. Like it wasn't going to get. I thought he could have went to cable. I think he could have got the same numbers and more support if he had went to like a BET or he went to a TV one or something like that. But to the, expect the, the, the for, you know pardon the pun, but the rope would have been longer. The rope would have been longer, right? And so going on CW, expecting him to do numbers like he did with Fox back in the nineties was just ridiculous to me after a 20-year layoff, you know. So it's sad to see him go. Hopefully he can come back and with a different type of style, different type of format. Don't come back with this 90s show. I, I liked it too, you'll, but. You'll, you'll never see Arsenio Hall in that format again. <laughs> right. Yeah, you Holler at us, you'll, 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 never, you'll, you'll, you'll never see him again. And it saddens me. A couple of the comments that I got in social media when I put this out, um, DJ Renee Melendez, who. I uh, host the Deep House Sessions with DJ Renee Melendez show with us here on Saturdays from 7 to 9. Says that the writing for his show was horrible. She agrees the 90s format yep. wasn't working in 2014. Uh, worked then, but won't work now. Uh, had the very same argument before. She and I debated this months ago. Uh, and uh, she's sticking with that argument. Uh, and she's like, really, because he's black, I'm sorry, as an artist, he could have done better. Uh, there's so much untaught talent in the industry. People are hungry and itching uh, for a break. Uh, co a cousin of mine, my cousin Alicia, jumped in, and she is agreeing with Renee, saying that his show is whack. She watched and cringed most of the time, and, and she heard about him being renewed. Uh, and then found out it was fishy uh, when he kept having TGT on three times a week. Uh, oh. Before I jump in, that's why you want to say something? Yeah, you know, I agree with Renee and I agree with your cousin. It seems like when he walks out, he's winging the show. That, that's what it seems like. You know, there's no plan for the show. There's nothing really happening. It's just like he's walking out and it's like, okay, what next? That that it feel it looks that way. That's why I've never I, I couldn't get into his show at all. Yeah, I don't. He he never even from the nineties never had a stage presence. The only mm -hmm. presence he had was that finger. You know what I'm saying? That long finger. That's the most thing. <laughs> even if even if you watch um, in Living Color when they do the skits for him, that's basically the main premise. What's of wrong the with skit Simi? Was his long <laughs> finger? You know. And again, um, I think the guests actually kept. His show was going because right. everybody was excited. Who wouldn't you guess? But I knew when he first came back on in this 2014 or whenever he came back on, when he said way. that his son told him to use "Let's Turn Up," but he said, "No, we're gonna keep it and let's get busy." So it's like oh, it yeah. was it was <laughs> nothing new. You can you even his old age. You can tell his his yeah. his presence just looks oh I, I got messed up. I got, so I'll it doesn't that. look interesting. He doesn't mm -hmm. look hype. He doesn't look refreshed. I mean, even though he's had a hiatus, but he still looks old and dirty. Mm -hmm. You know. So I appreciate for him being a black brother trying to get black shows back on TV. But you're right, the CW wasn't it either yeah. centric or BET, BET something, or like, something that. like that. But I think centric and BET knew the loss that they were going to have eventually. <laughs> Seriously, that? because us, we'll see. I bet you a whole lot of more of us than them said, he ain't going to make it. He ain't going to make, yeah. make it. So, you know, even though that may sound bad from us being a community, it's not that we were bringing him down. It was the same it's old, the same old. Mm -hmm. It was nothing new. The, even his stage setup was the same yep. from back in the day. I was like, you he's know? coming so, back. Oh, yeah. that ain't going to last. Well, I mean, all right, so to take away the way he looked, just to refute that for, refute that for a minute, mm -hmm. Johnny Carson was, on the, was, was the host of The Tonight Show for 40 years, from the late 60s up until the early 90s. 1992. 1992, and he aged. Now, granted, he did inherit a show, The Tonight Show, from Jack Parr, 
Yeah, yeah, go ahead. But I'm getting, again, just like his cousin stated as well, you have to look at the writers. You know, just like if somebody. My man, writing, Alex Scott said he but, wrote for him. Don't write right, it Like you said, the you see, that's why I love him. But, but right, that's what I'm saying. But yeah. Grizzly, look at if we really didn't write jokes, but we have somebody else to write it for us, and they write it, and they still be jacked up. We yeah. still be getting booed. That's you true. Know? That's true. So when he uses punchlines, you be looking at the But TV I think that, like, that has to do with whatever budget they have. Like I use for an example, I'm a big fan of Conan. I, you know, Conan mm-hmm. O'Brien, he went from NBC to TBS, and his ratings is not the same, but he's, he's still on the air as opposed to Arsenio. His ratings probably were never the same from the 90s, and he's not on the air. It's like you got to know where you're going when you do. I'm, and we're all speaking of novices because talking mm-hmm. about, you know, network TV and, and, and talk shows, but, you know, put it on centric. Here's right behind about five episodes of Good Times and three episodes of Martin. Here's what I'm going to say put it about it. Here's what I'm going to say about it. I, I think that we, as black people, are oftentimes hypercritical of our own. Mm. Um, a lot of the same people who I spoke with who had some of the criticisms that I'm hearing about Arsenio's show uh, right now are the same people that I saw on social media a couple of days ago going, man, we can't have nothing. They canceled Arsenio. These are the same people who I debated with six months ago when I was saying we need to be watching the show, we need to be supporting the brother, and we need to be, if we got issues with the writing, if we think it's corny, then we need to send a, lo- a, a letter to them and say, y'all need to freshen this up. Right. You know, so, you know, while I understand where y'all coming from, mm-hmm. because I agree with you, the show was corny. It just was. The jokes fell flat. It was corny. But what is missing, I think, is the fact that two months ago, they renewed the show, right? But since then, he's had on David Banner, who came on and dropped some knowledge. He's had on Paul Mooney, who came on. Mm-hmm. He's had on Dick that. Gregory, who came on. And it's now, all of a sudden, he can't grow the audience. Same argument they made 15, 20 years ago when they canceled his show after he had Farrakhan on there. We need to stop holding our people to a higher standard than we hold everybody else. Preach, and like Marcus. you said, Grizz, when we can sit and we can watch Johnny Carson for, t- for 30 years and we can sit and watch Jay Leno and, 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 and Letterman for all of these years and some of our people watch them shows. I do. But we turn off Arsenio because he's corny. You know, and so I, I personally have a problem because it's consistent I'd with what watch we Arsenio. is consistent with what a lot of us do in our community where, you know, when we watch the other shows, those shows are better. Or if we drink the other drink, you know, the ice is a little colder mm. than our ice. And, and, you know, and I'm not throwing darts at y'all, but this is the conversation that I've had with people. And it frustrates me because where else you going to see Taraji P. Henson? Where else you going to see James Avery? Uh, not James Avery. Queen Latifah, um, Latifah, Queen Latifah show. Latifah show. <laughs> okay. I'm you, proud you, of her, you, too. You're not going to see the show consistent. You're not going to see those kinds of things on her show consistently. Her show is more of a... Uh, Mainstream. It's more of a... hip-hop it's, gossip, which is exactly what they want. Look at Wendy Williams, yo. She's going to yeah. stay still on the air. Yeah. She, because well, you, you're of not gonna the get gossip. Me. She's but making I'm a good saying, point. She is. She is. A senior hole. A senior hole. He doesn't gossip. He doesn't bring the news. Yes, he brings artists and guests, which we can all Google about the guests. We can all look on TMZ Media Takeout about the guests that he has. But is he bringing the hot topics to let us know about those guests before they come out? You know, so that's what Wendy Williams have to uh, has to offer. That's why she's still. Arsenio, oh, you should have went Ratchet. I've noticed that her slot has moved. She was right after Arsenio, but now she's at one o'clock a.m. Yeah. on BET, right after Wendy Williams. So again, she's getting moved around too because Queen Latifah, her show isn't really that kick ass either. Right. You know, she has the lollipop people on there who bakes cakes and you know stuff like that. I like so cake. I feel like I as long that. as it's gossip and it's stuff that's making you say. Hmm. Thanks, Arsenio. Then, yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's not gonna be looked at. And Arsenio was one of the ones who was not given that. Hmm. He didn't have enough controversy yeah. or ratchetness. Uh, Although I will say, it's true. he had Suge Knight made controversy. Brian Williams, the NBC uh, news anchor, uh, they had a controversy with him. So he was kind. He was he was doing his damnedest. I just think that he probably didn't have on that CW budget. You know, is it the WB or CW? It's the same thing. Yeah, the same thing. Like, he didn't have enough 
of a machine behind him. Plus, he didn't gather the listeners that he wanted to, and that was a recipe I for just think destruction. That, I just think that it's fishy when you give the man a renewal, but then all of a sudden he starts bringing people on the air. That's yeah, Farrakhan, though. He ain't gonna do that. He he wasn't gonna make that we'll mistake do that again. again. But that's how he got. Right. That's how he got dropped he got before. Dropped last time. You know his his show was hot and ratings was great, and all of a sudden he gets canceled. And after five years on the air, and coincidentally weeks after he has Farrakhan on is when it happened. But we're we're gonna agree to disagree on this one. I, I just I, I'll stand by. You know I think that oftentimes we hold our own to a higher standard than other than others. And that just frustrates me. Ain't no half step on Marcus. Jack. Hold on. I see you frustrated. So give me 40 reasons why you like Arsenio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it made you laugh. I'll go ahead. Simi. No I give you one. Simi from <laughs> Coming to America. Ain't no half step on Marcus. Jay. We're going to take our first break of the night. And when we come back, we're going to talk some more. You need to play the happy We're going to talk some more. We ain't going to tell y'all what we're going to talk about, but we're going to talk some more. Marcus, J and the crew. I got the Dana Pool Diva, Jay Grizzy, my hey. co-host, uh, S.Y., and her special friend is in the room. Sipping on some Starbucks. Sipping on some Starbucks. Ain't bring me none. And then the first lady of Legacy and that radio's in the building with Don't us. Ain't no half step with Marcus, J. Be back in a minute. That's E and J.